Despite being the smallest and the closest planet to the Sun, Mercury is full of surprises. At first glance, this tiny world might seem dull and lifeless. But don't let its size fool you. It's sweltering, yet has water at its poles. The surface of Mercury is a spectacle in itself, with unique impact craters and landforms that baffle scientists. And despite its size, it has a thin atmosphere and a magnetosphere strong enough to shield its surface from solar winds. So let's unravel this small, yet intriguing planet's mysteries and secrets. Well, if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button before diving into the depths of Mercury. Mercury is a small planet with a radius of 1,500 miles, and it's situated relatively close to the Sun, just 36 million miles away on average. This proximity means a year on Mercury lasts only 88 days. It experiences extreme temperatures, soaring to 800 degrees Fahrenheit in the daytime, and then plummeting to negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit at night due to its thin atmosphere. Interestingly, Mercury spins slowly around its axis, causing long days and nights, each lasting about three months. As previously assumed, this slow rotation isn't due to the Sun's tidal forces. Instead, it results from a spin-orbit resonance with the Sun where Mercury rotates on its axis three times for every two orbits around it. This pattern might result from a past collision with a large object, as suggested by Mercury's numerous craters. Or it could have been like this from the start of its formation, as per some researchers like Benoit Noelles. Mercury's orbit is not a perfect circle, but more of an elongated oval, which alters its distance from the Sun between 29 and 43 million miles. Scientists recently discovered a dusty ring around Mercury's orbit to add to its uniqueness. This ring, thin and 9 million miles wide, might have been formed by meteoroids. Dr. Peter Pokorny and his team hypothesized this phenomenon might be common in other exoplanet systems, where frequent collisions occur with objects in space. Despite Mercury's small stature, it possesses a magnetic field. Though it's only 1% as strong as Earth's, it's still enough to deflect solar winds, creating a shield known as a magnetosphere. However, this shield isn't perfect. It has gaps that let in sunlight. The Messenger Space Telescope spotted magnetic tornadoes, hinting at connections with space and interactions with solar wind. These gaps also help maintain Mercury's faint atmosphere. However, the magnetic fields are created by moving electric currents in a planet's liquid metal core. Does Mercury have a core large enough for this? Surprisingly, the core makes up one-third of Mercury's mass and has a radius of roughly 1,289 miles, half that of Earth's. Professor William McDonoghue from the University of Maryland explains this is due to the processes at the start of the Sun's life, when heavy metals stayed close to it. This could be why Mercury's core is so large. But there's more to the story. Scientists think Mercury could have been much bigger. However, possible cataclysms such as the formation of Earth and Venus might have disrupted Mercury's growth by migrating closer to the Sun and taking Mercury's building material. Another theory about Mercury's composition suggests it could result from a collision between the planet and a large object in space. This impact might have caused Mercury to lose around a third of its outer layer. Such a massive collision could have thrown Mercury, originally further from the Sun, into its current orbit closer to the Sun. Continued impacts from other objects in space could have further eroded the planet's surface as we see from the numerous craters in its images. However, these are all just theories. We need more research to confirm them. Well, studying Mercury is challenging because it's hard to observe from ground-based telescopes due to its proximity to the Sun. It's also difficult to send spacecraft to Mercury because of the Sun's gravitational pull and heat. Only two missions, Mariner 10 and Messenger, have been sent to Mercury. Mariner 10, the first mission to use another planet's gravity to reach its destination, used solar radiation pressure on its solar panels for maneuvering. It confirmed Mercury's crater-covered surface, discovered its magnetosphere and thin atmosphere, and found its large core. Mariner 10 also took over 2,700 images of Mercury, covering almost half of the planet's surface. The mission lasted about a year, and the spacecraft might still be orbiting the Sun. Around 30 years later, the MESSENGER mission continued the work started by Mariner 10. 
In 2004, the spacecraft named Messenger did something amazing. Unlike the previous mission, Messenger not only flew by Mercury, but it also became the first ever to orbit the planet. This gave scientists lots of detailed information about Mercury. Messenger had a few main goals. It was there to find out what Mercury is made of, study its extremely thin atmosphere, called an exosphere, understand its magnetic field, and learn about the planet's geological history and the current state of its core. Before it started orbiting Mercury, Messenger did three loops around the planet. This was to slow down the spacecraft from its initial speed. By 2014, Messenger had taken a whopping 200,000 photos of Mercury. And in early 2015, it took another 2,500 pictures. But it was by this time that Messenger was running out of fuel. In April 2015, it finally stopped working and crashed into Mercury, creating a new crater. All in all, the Messenger mission lasted about 10 years and made some amazing discoveries. One of the coolest things it did was create a complete map of Mercury. This showed all the craters and basins on the planet's surface, so scientists could study its landscape in detail. Plus, Messenger found out what elements are present on Mercury. The surface contains 46% oxygen, 12% magnesium, 26% silicon, 7% aluminum, and 4% calcium. It also found a large amount of sulfur and a smaller amount of iron. These findings and pictures of what looks like old volcanoes suggest that Mercury might have once been volcanically active. It might have even been covered by a sea of molten rock or magma when the planet was cooling down. Heavier elements like iron would have sunk down as the planet cooled, explaining why there's not much iron at the surface. The magma might have released gases like sulfur, sodium, and chlorine into the atmosphere. These gases only disappear when it's really hot. Scientists think the magma could have also melted the planet's inside, but not enough to reduce its mass. Nowadays, Mercury is no longer geologically active. As it cooled, it shrank, causing cracks and ridges to form on the surface. Messenger also found signs of previous lava eruptions. And incredibly, it discovered water ice at Mercury's poles. Even though Mercury's surface is super hot, the poles aren't directly heated by the sun, so the water there stays frozen. This discovery even suggests that there might be liquid water inside Mercury under a layer of ash. But scientists aren't sure about this yet. In more straightforward language, the Messenger spacecraft discovered something unique about the magnetic field of Mercury. It has moved about 20% of the planet's radius. This can change how the planet's surface experiences things like solar particles. The spacecraft took over 2,000 wonderful photos of the entire solar system, apart from the faint Uranus and Neptune. This was the first time such an image was taken since 1990, captured by Voyager 1. But among all, the most fascinating discovery was Mercury's surface. Mercury's surface is interestingly varied. While it's mostly covered in craters, it has smooth areas, ridges, and troughs. We know of 567 craters so far, named after important people. The craters are of two types, simple and complex. Simple craters are more common, typically 0.6 to 9 miles wide and less than 7 miles deep. Complex craters are larger, from 10 to 168 miles wide and over 7 miles deep. Mercury has more of these large surface features than any other body in the solar system. For instance, there are 110 craters with a peak in the middle, compared to 17 on the moon. There are also larger impact basins, which can be as big as 200 or up to 963 miles. These are caused by fast-moving objects hitting the planet's surface. Some of the most famous basins are the Calaris and Rembrandt basins. Calaris, the largest crater on Mercury, was once filled with lava. The object that caused the Calaris may have also created Mercury's chaotic terrain. The Rembrandt basin is about half the size of Calaris and was likely also filled with lava at some point, making the area around it smooth. There are many other unique craters on Mercury. For instance, the Beck Crater is the oldest on Mercury and may be over 4 billion years old. It also has the darkest spot on the planet, covered in volcanic ejecta. Mercury also has rare crater types like elliptical, polygonal, and ghost craters. All these craters form in different ways. For example, elliptical craters form due to low-velocity, large-volume space bodies, making up about 2-4% of the surface. The polygonal craters probably form due to the structure of the planet's crust. 
Ghost craters are barely visible, as their bottoms are filled with lava deposits, but are distinguishable by ridges along the edges. Ray craters, another interesting crater type seen on Mercury and the Moon, are known for their long, radiating divergences. The longest on Mercury, extending from the Hokusai crater, is about 2,800 miles long. These lines appear due to the subsurface elements ejected upon impact, which fade over time. The brighter the line, the younger the crater. These craters provide insights into the planet's geological activity and age. Young craters are convex with terraces on the walls, while older ones are shallower, likely filled with volcanic material. NASA researcher Caleb Fassett noted a lack of craters between 12 and 80 miles wide, which could be attributed to the frequent formation of inner crater planes early in Mercury's history. Mercury has around 100 high surface structures like ridges and escarpments. These were formed during different periods through various mechanisms, such as volcanic activity, man cooling, and compression of the planet. On average, they reach a height of 0.07 to 0.5 miles. Some ranges, like the Antonidae dorsum, can reach up to 360 kilometers in length. Nearly 27% of Mercury's surface is occupied by smooth plains with few craters. These plains, found at all latitudes and around large basins, are mostly formed due to volcanic activity and particle emissions by the Calaris Basin. Mercury also features hollows, shallow depressions with flat bottoms and no edges, which occupy about 0.08% of the planet. Often found inside impact craters, these hollows are believed to be much younger than Mercury and are formed by the loss of volatiles from the surface. This ongoing process leads scientists to believe that 99% of Mercury's surface could be completely transformed in 25 million years. Mercury mysteries are continuously fascinating scientists with their unique features. Even though it's the smallest planet, it still has much to offer for astronomers. That's why in 2018, a new spacecraft, Bepi Colombo, was deployed to investigate Mercury further. This mission comprises two individual spacecraft to study Mercury from differing distances. The primary goal of Bepi Colombo is to build on the findings of the prior messenger mission, delving deeper into Mercury's magnetic field displacement, polar water deposits, and the existence and formation of hollows on the planet's surface. By 2025, Bepi Colombo is expected to enter Mercury's orbit and commence its main research operations. This comprehensive study is expected to unravel countless secrets surrounding Mercury, enhancing our understanding of the solar system's history. If you love these space wonders, stay updated about the latest explorations with us. Keep sharing and liking our videos. And until then, we'll see you in the next video.